I shall say this only once. Hello and welcome. So this is just a preliminary message when it comes to deal with the coil springs. Uh, in any car, please make sure that you use safety equipment such as eye protection. Make sure that the area you are working is clear in case uh, there's an accident or there's damage or a coal spring suddenly just uh, jumps out. It doesn't hit anyone or doesn't hit any valuable object. Use good quality spring compressors. Don't use uh, cheap stuff which uh, can uh, snap at or give away at any moment. And please do not use any power tools when you ratchet, uh, when you're undoing or undoing the spring compressors, do not use power tools because that can damage the thread. Always use your normal ratchet, go slowly, take your time, it is crucial. Don't need to rush anything. Also, um, I have already some experience in doing uh, coal spring replacements in my cars in the past, so I kind of know what I do. So I do this video as a guide, so do this at your own risk. If you don't feel comfortable in doing it, please do not do it. Uh, like I said, eye protection, use the right tools, make sure the surroundings uh, are clear and take your time. So I hope this video will be useful for you. So, uh, oh, and just one more thing. This uh, procedure also applies if you want to replace the front suspension on your Mark III Focus and also can be applied for the Mark II as well. Uh, I think on Mark II just a, a small difference when it comes to the top mountings and I think that's about it. So um, let's go and have a look. So I've done the passenger side and see how things would have gone if, if uh, I found any problems or anything like that and it was actually uh, not. A difficult job. Now I'm going to show you how I've done on the driver's side. Uh, as you can see the car is already jacked up, the um, axle stand is already under the subframe and removed the wheel and I've also soaked up the um, uh, drop link of the anti-roll bar a little bit and also this bracket here where uh, the um, brake hose attaches to and also I, uh, I wire brush everything and then this collar here and also put some WD-40 uh, let it soak for a bit and then just put a little bit more in order to start to uh, seep in to the uh, collar of uh, the suspension strut now uh, what I'm going to do use a number 8 socket to remove this uh, bracket here and then I'm going to use a number 5 uh, ring spanner and a number five Allen key in order to secure it. And remove the ABS sensor because otherwise it will be in the way. Now I'm removing this bolt that uh, tightens the collar by using a number 15 socket and I'm going to use a breaker bar because it's uh, make it easier to, uh, to remove it afterwards. Now it is hammer time, but before, uh, make sure you protect your ears. I'm using these uh, memory foam uh, ear defenders where I just to uh, give them a bit of a squeeze, put them in my ears and then uh, insert them in. Uh, the reason for that is that the noise is absolutely immense and uh, you don't want to end up deaf. Um, also wise to wear some uh, uh, safety goggles as well. and. For this, I'm going to use a block hammer uh, where I'm going to tap. Uh, I'm just going to wait for my ear defenders to uh, be fully inserted. Um, where I'm just going to uh, tap this 
several occasions, one uh, each side. Uh, not very popular with the neighbors, but uh, to be perfectly honest, uh, it's my wallet that is more important at the moment. It's a Sunday afternoon, everyone is uh, getting drunk and uh, having their roast, getting stuffed with their roast dinners, so I don't think it should be too much of a problem. Uh, okay, so let's go and do it. You already can see that the, there is a line. Basically, the knuckle is already starting to push down, and um, uh, but there is still quite some way to go. But it's good pro progress, nevertheless. Uh, another technique that you can use. You might not be able to see so much in here, but you can actually insert a, a chisel. Uh, I tried several times, which basically just props open the clamp. But I've tried several times, but sometimes it just it keeps uh, falling down again. After there is some progress, I just apply a little bit more of WD-40 and let it soak for a little bit more. See if it penetrates uh, a bit further down. This is starting to get a little bit looser now. Ah, yes, amazing, have to be careful not to extend too much the, uh, the uh, drive shaft, you don't want it to pop, but it can be a bit tricky. Okay. That wasn't too bad, to be honest. I've seen cars where this is actually much worse and depends on how rusty they are around the color. But yeah, not too bad. Now, after you re uh, release the uh, knuckle from the suspension strut, you, there is a piece of trim that you have to remove. Basically, there's this under tray in here. I've already removed earlier on, but I uh, don't really need to show how to do it. It's very, very simple. You have a Torx uh, screw around here. I think it is number 25 or 30. You just unscrew that. There's one on each side. And then what you have to do, there are about four pop rivets. You just pop them up. And then there is also a uh, number 10. Um, I think it is a number 10 uh, screw in here. You just remove it and then just take this off. Then it is time to remove the actual strut from the car itself. And you have three nuts in here. You don't have to remove this um, uh, strut brace. All you have to do is to, but only after you release it from the knuckle, you use a 13 mil socket and then you just undo the screws in here and then you can remove the strut. Oops, it's gone. Oh well, and here it is. And you can see in here the uh, the offending spring. Quite funny because it looks like they broke on the similar place as the other one. Interesting. Little fatigue. Okay, now it's time to remove uh, the spring from the strut. 
I'm going to use the two normal spring compressors. They are perfectly alright for this job. It's not like the Mercedes where the job was an absolute pain in the backside and I needed a very meaty uh, spring compressor. Uh, and the uh, job uh, should be alright actually. So two spring compressors, one on the opposite end of the other so that they don't uh, get in the way. Now to remove the uh, top nut, uh, I'm going to use uh, this hollow socket set. Uh, you could see uh, the review um, I've I've made uh, a few uh, months ago about this tool, which is very useful for this sort of work. And then a number six Allen key, and just going to hopefully it will. So what have just happened in there is that because unlike uh, on the other side where I just removed the the, um, uh, the suspension mount from the top, in this one I removed from the side and I completely forgot what I had in mind before, which is to be careful and not to pull out from here. It has to be from the top because otherwise it can split and then as you saw the ball bearings uh, all start to come out. Luckily it was just only a few of them. I managed to clean them up and put them back in and then click in place. I'll just remove this. Should be fairly easy anyway. And then just keep this in one piece. Let's see the condition of this suspension anyway. Uh, not a quick rebound, but it might, it is starting to lose some efficiency really, but it's not dead yet. Just going to give this a bit of a clean and then put back in the new spring. So this is the brand new spring that I got from Ford. Uh, a pair of them was less than £95, which was about the same price as the sax ones you can find on Euro Car Parts. I thought, uh, well, why am I bother going to Euro Car Parts uh, when I have a Ford dealership just right on my doorstep? and then uh, they ordered for me and then got it uh, almost on the same day so for the uh, 2013 ford uh, focus eco boost uh, ztac version the part number is 1851892 and um, uh, they come just like that and i'm going to start to install it now brand new spring here we go hopefully it will last a bit longer than the old one but I'm not too confident to be perfectly honest uh, because springs in modern cars they don't tend to last these days there you go always make sure that when you install the spring it is where uh, where it was on the old place and then I'm gonna start to compress I'm going to remove from the old spring and start to compress it Okay, so I have now compressed the springs enough. Uh, make sure that they go to the correct position in here. Like so. And then able to put the mount back on top. And I have just enough to insert the uh, collar screw and 
have to make sure that this lines up. With the bodywork, so when you're going to insert, when you to uh, on up to the um, suspension tower, this ridge has to be pointing to the engine. Insert this onto the suspension tower, and then from the top, I will try to uh, screw uh, screw it and try to secure it in place. Now here comes the fun part number two which is to insert this back into place. Now bear in mind that, sorry I forgot to show, there is like a guiding pin here at the back of the strut which slides on to this crevice here. Um, so I have to make sure that when I insert this on the collar, uh, the guiding pin is lined with this cut in here. Uh, it won't, uh, by the time I start to insert it, it will still be quite far off, so I have to make sure uh, that is properly lined up. Um, I've just uh, used a little bit of um, <coughs> wet and dry in here to smooth this down in order to make it easy to insert, and I'm going to put a little bit of the D40. <coughs> Sorry, in order to help it to uh, um, uh, make the job a little bit easier. Here we go. Have to be careful with the with the drive shaft and make sure that the guiding pin is in the correct place. Well, it seems to be, but I'll soon find out. Now, it's time to use the um, trolley jack in order to, from the bottom of the ball joint, and then push it up. Now all is in place and I have a little bit of a difficulty initially because this pin in here was a little bit offset so I had to knock the uh, distorting knuckle down and then just try to twist it slightly in order to fall back in place as you can see this recess in here this pin has to fill in this recess and then again with the trolley jack push it up a little bit of dollar 40 to help to slide in more easily and the job's a good one now i'm going to put the um, main screw for the collar and put everything else uh, back in place and it's all in place now everything tightened all the bolts screwed in place the uh, abs sensor cable plugged back in and also give a little bit of a cleaner to the uh, disc brake uh, because of the splatter of uh, WD-40 and other bits. Um, so there you go, it's all uh, ready for the wheel to go back in place and the car can be serviced, used once more. I just have to put this back in, but that's just an easy job. And uh, there you go. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on next video. Take care.